The empty buildings of Africa's cities provide the perfect platform for the creation of a new community-based economy. It is the responsibility of property developers, in addition to simply housing businesses and individuals, to create an integrated economy that offers opportunities for all. Ten years ago, after having traveled all around the world, I returned to Johannesburg and felt a sense of emptiness. My options of where I could live and work were really limited. I moved from suburb to suburb, but nothing felt right. I just wasn't engaging with the city. Eventually, my wife, who was an actress at the time, introduced me to a creative community that was being developed on the west side of the city. Here, a bunch of creatives were moving into old factory spaces and converting them into new alternative live and work spaces. We proceeded to convert our own space into the dream home that we always spoke of. And in doing this, I learned two important things. One was that the creative community can play a very important role in transforming an area, and two, the potential of factory spaces in becoming new live and work spaces. I also realized that this was something that I was really passionate about and wanted to do with my life. So I approached my architect, Enrico de Foncio, and we set out looking for our own bunch of buildings where we too could create an artistic community. I conceptualized Arts on Main, a mix of studios, galleries, and creative office spaces. The buildings that we found were on the east side of the Joburg CBD, in an area called City and Suburban. The buildings were perfect for an artistic conversion in that they had triple volume ceilings and the history and character of 100-year-old buildings. Early on, I approached William Kentridge, one of South Africa's leading artists, and he committed to taking the largest studio space in the development. Following Kentridge's interest, a number of South African leading artists, galleries, and businesses took space in the project, and soon a creative community had begun. During the construction of Arts on Main, I poured all my energy into making sure that the project was the success that I knew that it needed to be. I moved my offices onto site and was there every day, managing absolutely every aspect of the development, from sales management to project management to financial management. I did everything. And eventually, the development was completed in mid-2009. It opened to a great reception to both the Johannesburg arts community as well as people that were just looking for something different, people that hadn't been into the city for over 20 years. Then the idea got bigger. I started thinking of a whole area that could be developed around Arts on Main that could house an enlightened community. At a similar time, two artists came out from Germany and collaborated with a Sowetan artist and installed the major artwork on the roof of Arts on Main that said Maboneng. This Sutu word meaning place of light epitomized the vision that I had for this new enlightened area. The next step in creating Maboneng was to add a residential component to the area so that people could not only work in the area, but live there too. I then conceptualized Main Street Life, which was the first residential building in Maboneng. But this wasn't going to be any ordinary residential building. The building aimed to create work opportunities for people within their living environments. We did this by giving each floor a different creative focus. So we had visual arts, fashion, film, architecture, and design. And we kept exhibition spaces and workshop spaces on each of these floors so that tenants could come together, live, create, collaborate, all within the same space. We also introduced interesting facilities like a rooftop bar and boxing gym, a cinema, a theater, and two restaurants on the ground floor, where tenants again could come together and connect. Initially, it was really difficult attracting people back into the inner city. So I took a really alternative approach in marketing the building. I moved into one of the penthouses while the building was still under construction with my wife, and we started hosting a number of networking parties so that people would become comfortable with living, with the, with living in the city again. We also hosted a number of music videos, art installations, and film sets so that energy was poured back into the building. Main Street Life was completed in mid-2010, and quickly the residential community had grown to over 300 people. The community was diverse, including artists, designers, bankers, lawyers, doctors, anybody that was ready to be a part of the inner-city regeneration of Johannesburg, people that wanted to be part of something special. On the top floor of Main Street Life, I designed an art hotel called The Twelve Decades. Here, using members of the existing Mabonain community, 
We designed 12 completely different rooms inspired by a different decade of Joburg's brief but illustrious history. The hotel has been very successful in attracting an international community into the area so that they too can enjoy Maboneng. And also attracting what I call the extreme local tourist. That's people that live three kilometers away from the city that haven't engaged with the city for over 20 years. We've also started hosting a number of major events in the area that succeeded in bringing big crowds back into the city. Some of these include South African Fashion Week, TEDx Johannesburg, as well as a number of high-profile art exhibitions during the 2010 World Cup. Following the success of these events in bringing back the crowds, I realized that there was a need for a more regular weekly event. Two artists, two tenants from Arts on Main stepped forward and conceptualized Market on Main, a weekly food and design market showcasing the best that Johannesburg has to offer. Over 15 new entrepreneurs were created within a few months, and many of these new traders have also committed to taking retail space on the streets of Maboneng. In the same entrepreneurial spirit, many of Maboneng's residents have started to create and expand their businesses. One resident, a fashion designer, has taken her living space and converted it into a multi-use space where she actually manufactures her clothing range and then sells her clothing range at the weekly market on Main. Another resident is one of the founders of the Bioscope, the independent cinema on the ground floor of Main Street Life. And another has pioneered Pop Art, a theater space showcasing local performers. There's also been a very strong positive knock-on effect in the area around our buildings. Many of the building owners have started painting their facades and completing internal renovations that have upgraded their buildings. Existing business owners have also started to expand their range of services, including the butcher, who's now started selling prepaid electricity, and the locksmith, who's never been happier thanks to the forgetful residents of Main Street Life. <laughs> residents and businesses have started to engage with the community around Maboneng. One resident has initiated a program called One Crash at a Time, which goes into the local crashes and upgrades and fundraisers for, these, for their buildings. Another has started to design, manufacture, and then teach kids how to skateboard on the streets of Maboneng. The Goethe Institute, a tenant at Arts on Main, as well as the Bioscope from Main Street Life, have come together to create a, a series of film screenings that promote self-actualization for the local school children in the area. We're now on site on phase three of Maboneng, which includes three unique buildings. One, the main change, will house a bunch of innovation spaces that promotes private sector change in the economy. Our offices have moved onto the top floor of the building while under construction again. The building has a number of unique features, including a yoga and meditation center, as well as a rooftop health restaurant. Across the road from that, we've got Revolution House, which is a skate park on the ground floor, sound and film studios on the first floor, and apartments above. We're also building rooftop units on the top and, and gardens on the roofs of the buildings. And then Fox Street Studios, where I'll be moving my house to the top of the building, and my architect will moving, be moving his offices to the third floor, floor of the building. Also starting now is phase four, which is artisan res and mode. The artisan res aims to house students from the local universities in the area and facilitate collaboration between artists and artisans within the area. And then MODE, the Museum of African Design, design that can change the world. After having lived and worked all around Maboneng, I've learned the need to create a community. My call to property developers across Africa is to identify the needs of yourselves and those around you and to see the potential in the dilapidated and vacant buildings and transform them into spaces that inspire ideas. Thank you.